So do you guys want to know the truth about the Dart Zone Pro Mark I? Well, then you're going to want to watch this video. But this thing sure does shoot hard. What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and this is an unboxing and review of the Dart Zone Pro Mark I. So... I actually was not one of the first people to just jump on the bandwagon of purchasing the Dart Zone Pro, but I finally decided to buy one about a month ago, I guess. So it's been a little bit waiting. I mean, I didn't purchase it until some people were already receiving theirs. So I was kind of surprised it took this long to get here, but it's finally here and I'm super, super excited to do a review for you guys to give you the best and honest opinion I can of this blaster. So one of the gimmicks is they said it comes with a carrying case. It's just this box, cardboard box. I'm sure you guys all know that by now. It's not terrible, but it's not anything special. And it's not something that I'll probably be holding on to to carry my blaster around with, but we'll go ahead and see what's inside. And there we go. So Hopefully I can get it all in frame there. And you can see that this is number 720. One of the gimmicks also was this is a limited edition blaster and they will only be making a thousand of them. I would have liked them to make that a little bit bigger deal if that's the case and actually let us pick the number that we were getting. I think that would have been to their benefit instead of just sending them out randomly. So in the package, you will receive the front portion, barrel portion of your blaster, the back portion, which is the grip and plunger tube and the rest of the blaster magwell and whatnot. Uh, so it does break in half. So that's kind of interesting. You also will get two pins that will hold those parts together. You get a front, I guess, somewhat angled foregrip. We get both long and short darts because this will fire both of those and very hard I might add and then we get a magazine that holds half links and full links we will look at those when we crack this open we get a little piece here that is a tool that allows us to I think clear jams and then also get into the spring rest I think it allows you to release the part back here which will allow you to swap springs out easily which is pretty awesome we also get a second barrel. This is a plastic barrel that will allow us to shoot other types of darts. And then we get some iron sights, which are not flip up. They kind of look like flip up sights, but they're just plastic sights. And then you get a stock, which is pretty sweet and does have a nice rubbery part on the back there, along with this grip, which is also rubberized. So that's pretty darn cool. Let's get this baby out of the package. All right, you guys, so obviously your blaster comes in two sections. I went ahead and attached the foregrip, which you have to do with four screws. So you, it just is a clamshells apart, and then you just put it together and screw it down. These just slide right on. They're a little cheap in my opinion, but it's nice that you get, you know, some iron sights. The stock just slides on, and it's really cool because it has multiple points where you can lock it in so should fit pretty much any person which is awesome but these two parts just slide together like so and then we will put in our two pins and our two thumb screws make sure obviously that it's lined up with your bolt sled and these are actually kind of cool because they give you a little rubber o-ring inside of there which is nice i think and kind of protects the metal from getting scratched hopefully there we go and now we are together so we'll go ahead prime back huh so right off the bat i realize you cannot deprime this blaster so that's interesting choice that they've put a lock in there that won't allow you to deprime the blaster, which means they must be pretty confident that this thing will hold up over dry firing. So I do notice that actually when you prime back, you're not engaging the spring until that point, which is, 
whew, almost two inches, at least an inch and a half there before it actually engages the spring. Um, but that actually is sliding the plunger back. So I'm assuming this is how they've allowed the, basically a retaliator design to work with both half links and full link darts with a sealed breech. Well, we'll see if it's a true sealed breech soon enough, but, uh, but yeah, in theory, a sealed breech. Right off the bat, <laughs> I can tell you that I am not a huge fan of these pins. They were, I feel like they were okay on the CETA because it actually allowed you to access the plunger and all that stuff, but this one does not. You still would have to clamshell this in half, so I don't really understand. This is basically just for travel, just for maybe even for shipping purposes. Maybe that's why they did it, but then they didn't even bother with making them the correct length. That's really, really ugly. And I mean, this isn't a good look already, but then you have this metal protruding on this side, which is why I put the rings on that side, because I think that looks even worse. That's just me. So that's a probably my biggest complaint so far with this blaster. But other than that, the grip on this blaster, man, that is a very, very comfy grip. I love this rubber. That is so, so nice. The trigger feels really good. The front grip, a little wobbly, but you know, this is a Picatinny rail underneath there, so this will probably change. Would have liked to get something that locked on like a normal Picatinny attachment rather than a clamshell. And then also it would've been nice to get the rubber grip on this front part. For a blaster that costs $180, I think uh, that could have been added, honestly. You know, I've built blasters like this Cedar behind me that some people have commented on. Now, not including the paint job, but I did a mod video for what I've done internally to that blaster, and I'll link that above. But basically, I built that for the same cost as this cost right out of the box. And I'm not gonna get into a comparison right now, but we may do, we will most likely do a comparison video later on. But, but yeah, just, just, and that one has full metal internal. So that's just a side note there. Back to the review of the blaster itself here. I do think it's really cool that they've gone with a Picatinny rail on top here. So it is something you can put, you know, legit, you know, attachments onto. It does have a buffer tube. So, you know, your imitation stocks will work on here. But yeah, that is a cool thing. And so we could just take this off and put a different stock on it. But this stock is not too bad. I do like the rubber on the back of it. That's nice. And actually this rubber comes off and allows you to, it has two O-rings actually inside of it and allows you to store that tool in there. So that's uh, pretty neat. We do have a trigger lock on here. So it says F and that's pushed in right now. So that's for fire. And then this is S for safety. So you can pull that back and now you cannot pull the trigger. So that's S for safety, so that's pretty neat. You have your magazine release down here. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of how that looks. It's kind of weird looking, and I just don't like the way it's molded, I guess. It also seems a little far away, just a tad, so it takes a little more effort to push, and I think that, string, that spring in there is actually pretty strong, so that may have something to do with it also, which is not a bad thing. I like the way this blaster looks overall. I think the front portion looks awesome. This is very aggressive. The plastic is very high quality. I definitely think it's a much higher quality plastic and much higher quality blaster than their normal blasters they make, which is more of a budget blaster, but this is not that at all. And the price obviously resembles that. It has some nice texturing on the side there. Uh, so that's nice that they've done that. I love all the little indentions here. You now all that just looks really cool. I don't really care that they actually decided to put some uh, warning labels on this side of the blaster. That's a little strange to me that they did that on this side of the blaster. Usually you see those only on this side and they have that over here too. The back part of the blaster is just so flat. Like I wish they would have shaped that a little differently. I really like actually how the back of the Cedar looks. That just looks a little strange to me, but overall I do think the blaster looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and put a magazine in it. So you do get a full length magazine and a half length magazine, which is very similar to your Talon mag or your Katana mag. Um, pretty much a direct you know, imitation of that. 
So that's cool that they do give you both things and this has its own adapter. So that's pretty sweet. So we'll just go ahead and throw the half length one in first because that's probably what I'll be using mostly in this. To not, the, not being able to prime the blaster is kind of annoying and just not normal for me. But honestly, as long as it's not going to damage itself, I think it's important that you've built a very strong blaster and it can be dry fired because it's going to happen when you play with a blaster. You're not going to be you're not going to know exactly what dart you're on and it's going to happen. So, but I wouldn't recommend doing it a ton, um, but I really don't have a choice. Well, I guess we could put a dart in. Why don't we put a dart in? Speaking of darts, these, what people are calling bamboo darts and they do look like bamboo darts are pretty darn cool with the, the ribs. Uh, the long dart has four ribs and the short one has two. Uh, that's pretty interesting. The short one, actually, I've noticed the, uh, Ribs are actually a little thicker on the short one than they are on the long one. But uh, I think that gives it a seal, but not as much friction going through the barrel. And that's an interesting design. The tip design is interesting too, but the darts are, look really, really good. I really think they're really cool. But we'll go ahead and throw one of these half links in here and I hopefully will not lose it because I don't have that many of them yet. More will be on the way because you get some bonus darts if you picked one of these up but they are shipped separately. So load that up and we will go ahead and just fire into the pillow. But yeah, that fired pretty darn hard. Sounds pretty good. Well, I have another complaint. <laughs> That's a little sloppy, a little sloppy. I wonder if you can pull this out. No. I really don't like that I can't deprime this blaster because I have to prime it to pull the magazine out, but then you don't have a dart in and it's, ugh. I wish I could deprime the blaster. I think you should be able to deprime the blaster. That's just a, very annoying to me. And I ha hate dry firing it. That's, it doesn't sound terrible, but it sounds kind of like, maybe like a rival blaster a little bit. So hopefully it's okay, but uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what's inside of this thing and see how padded that is in there. I don't need to talk about this anymore. Let's take this thing outside, put it over the chronograph in the range and see what kind of performance it's getting. All right, you guys, let's get to testing the Dart Zone Pro by putting some shots with the darts it comes with, which most of us probably know by now, this is what it's gonna work best with, but we'll see how well it will or won't work with other darts in both types of barrels too. But for now, we'll start out with the full length and half length versions of the darts on pro darts so well let's start with the half links why not one sixty nine duplet one sixty nine one seventy four one sixty seven one seventy three one sixty eight 171, 162, 168, 172, 169, 170, 168, 170, 166, and that's it. Full links. 166. 157. 160. 164. 167. Pretty darn good there. 165. Wow. 164. 168, 161, 165, 
170, and that's it. Wow, the uh, numbers with the full lengths were more impressive than I expected. I wasn't seeing too many people getting those kinds of numbers with the full lengths, but uh, yeah, very good numbers and very good range, at least 80 feet flat. It's pretty darn good, maybe even further, honestly, with some of those, even with the full lengths. They are going from here all the way to the sidewalk, which usually from where I fire to the end of here is about 70, so that's at least 10 feet past that, so I would say at least 80. All right, let's test out that accuracy, see how accurate it is. Zombie man's probably mm, close to 70 foot away, maybe 65. Boom, hit. Ooh, just over his arm. Hit. Just to the right. Hit. Ooh. That might have been my fault. Left. Hit. Ooh, grazed him. Hit. Hit. Ooh, skied it there a little high. Hit. Low right. Hit. Go with some full links now. Ooh, a little high. Ooh, wind got that one. A little right. Hit. Hit. Just a little low, that might have been my fault. Hit. Hit. Uh, a little low. Hit. Hit. Ah, uh, low. Hit. 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 Oh, guess we're out. I'd say uh, that's a very accurate stock blaster. The most accurate stock blaster I've ever fired. So, uh, very impressive. All right, you guys. So, at first glance, this blaster is pretty darn awesome. And I'm not saying it's not awesome. This thing does what it's meant to do and very well as long as you're using these darts. And I have a feeling this was on purpose from Dart Zone that they wanted this blaster to really only work with their darts, even though they tell you that you can shoot other types of darts with this barrel. And I did not find that to be the case at all. This barrel seems to be, I won't go as far as saying pointless, but almost pointless. The only advantage I could see from using this barrel is it actually lowers the FPS with their darts than the barrel it comes with. And this would get you down close to that end war FPS level when you're using this. So that would be the only use I could see using this barrel. And this barrel is also not made very well as it's kind of chopped off very roughly. And uh, I thought that was pretty tacky to be honest. But let me talk about the good real quick. I said a lot of the things I really liked about this blaster. The grip is probably one of my favorite grips I've ever felt on any sort of blaster. So that's a big A+. I actually think the stock is pretty awesome. I know some people had problems with it collapsing, but that really only happens if you put a lot of force on it and it's in like the furthest back position, which I don't need to run it in as I'm shorter. So never had any issues there. It's very stable on there. I like it a lot. Other stocks will work on this, but you will have to probably remove, I would recommend removing this tab here, which is the exact same thing I had to do with my CETA to make other stocks work. So remember that if you're gonna use a different stock. Breaking down the blaster to replace the barrel, if you wanna put that plastic barrel in or if you wanna put some other barrel in, 
isn't too difficult. You just had to remove four screws, two on each side, and then the one underneath here to do that. So I didn't really say that earlier, so I wanted to say that if you wanted to do that. And then this whole part just pulls out, which is kind of cool. And then actually this barrel part can clip out of this part. So it breaks down nicely that way. I honestly think making this blaster though break in half the way they did was a big mistake. At least from my point of view, in my point of view, it was a big mistake. I think we could have gotten a much better air seal if they didn't do that because when you do that, let me go ahead and take it apart real quick. You actually have multiple places for air loss. You have it where the pusher goes into the breech, which is not a perfect air seal. I even tested it uh, like this, which I can't really show well on video because it kind of requires two people, um, but it does not have a perfect air seal even to here. And then this goes into a spot back here where there's like another plastic bit in the middle of this and then the barrel goes into the other side of that. So that's three different spots where it can lose air after the pusher. And that's not including anything behind here. I'm not sure how perfect it is even up until that point. It could obviously lose a seal between the, you know, the, in the plunger tube area also. So I say that's not great, but honestly, I think that was on purpose. I don't think Dart Zone wanted this to have a great air seal. I think they wanted it to be that way so then it would not be able to fire other types of darts that have your normal type of foam. That's why they created darts like this, so it would have very loose a loose fit and fire really hard. So I want to say they did they could have done a better job designing this, but I think they did a perfect job designing this to do what they wanted it to do. I wish they would have been transparent though and let us know that this blaster can only fire their darts because if it cannot fire other darts consistently, it fires them every now and then, and it does some weird things when doing it. And I'll try to show that while I'm talking here, but 99. it does not fire them consistently at all, like maybe half the time. And that's being generous with obviously waffle heads and AccuFakes, things like that. I didn't even expect really to work at all out of this system. It doesn't really work out of any sort of sealed breech or tight barrel system. You know, so it doesn't really work well anyways out of those. So I didn't really expect it to work, but it not working with worker darts or other half link darts, even nipple tip darts. I tried quite a few different things, nothing worked. And it's because of the foam and because of the way this blaster was designed. So to be honest, I'm pretty irritated that I didn't know that it wasn't gonna be able to fire any other darts besides the ones they sent before purchasing this. If you guys feel the same way, let me know in the comment section below because I feel like we should have gotten that information from definitely the company, but even from reviewers that got a hold of this thing initially. I'm surprised, and a lot of these people are my friends, and I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I'm surprised that they did not state this in their reviews. But uh, I'm stating it for you guys because it's the truth. Also, I think personally that Dart Zone stole most of their design from the CETA. And I know a lot of people give Jet crap about their company, and yes, they definitely have flaws, but I'm gonna give credit where credit is due, and a lot of this blaster came directly from the CETA, especially the magazines. And I know Talon magazines are out there, and Worker kinda took that. Obviously, it's a really good design, and people are gonna copy it, but this is almost a direct copy of a katana mag even the pusher mechanism up here the follower i guess is designed exactly like a katana mag uh, they even put the holes in the side like a katana mag which is one of the things that i wouldn't recommend copying but they did that i mean it is a basically you know it's better made than a katana mag i will say that but it's they basically stole this straight from a katana mag the only difference really is they didn't make it so you could load it both directions. So you could only load it in one way, which I actually think is one of the good things about a katana is you can load darts both ways, but yeah. So in conclusion, I know this video is longer and I greatly appreciate it if you've watched it till the end or even if you just skipped to the end to get my conclusions and my opinions on the blaster. 
Obviously, this is a very, very expensive blaster that performs very, very well out of the box. And I think if you're not a modder, uh, if you want something that shoots hard straight out of the package, you're not willing to even just do a drop-in kit in like a CETA or an Exus 2 or, you know, a Prophecy or any of the kits that are made for standard Nerf blasters. If you're not okay with doing those, uh, you just want something that's ready to go right out of the box. You really like the way this looks. You're okay buying their darts and only using their darts. This blaster is for you. But I have a feeling that not too many people are willing to do that. I do not know at this time how much they're going to charge for those darts. I think that's going to be a huge, huge factor on how well this is perceived, you know, and other blasters they come out with, if they do come out with more, how well those will sell. It'll all depend on how much those darts are sold for um, and how easy they are to get. Now, this is only for sale in the U.S. along with the magazines, which I believe are going to be around $10 a piece. And those are getting ready to be ready for pre-sale and should ship in the next month or so. You can buy them in three packs. I think the full lengths are $30, the half lengths are $30, and if you want the adapter, that's I think you get three of those with three half length mags. I think that's 40. So, you know, I think that's a reasonable price. I'm okay with those prices. So hopefully that's a good sign for the darts. But the blaster being $180, I don't know if it's worth it, guys. I don't know if it's worth it. Like I said, I built a CETA with full metal internals for about the same price. And Honestly, I don't even consider that modding. I just threw in a kit in the blaster. I opened it up, threw it in, closed it up, and that's about all I did to it. Didn't even really need to tune anything. I might have lubed some things up, but honestly, standard maintenance, lubing, things like that, you have to do with any blaster like this. You have to know how to do some simple maintenance on your blasters. You have to open them up every now and then to keep them working. You can't just buy something and use it a lot and expect it to be good for a long period of time. You have to be able to do a little bit of modding, you know, I guess if you want to call it that. You have to be able to open up your blaster and at least do some maintenance on it. So that's just a word to the wise. I think a lot of people just buy stuff and think it's going to work perfectly and maybe it will at first, but it won't forever. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I have so much that I want to say about this blaster that I didn't even get to in this video and it being so long, I will have to just save it for another video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try to get to them. I always try to reply to everybody's comments I possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. And as always, peace out.